Discovered Treasures. Welcome back. Hello. Um, so today, I thought since spring is right around the corner, summer's gonna come up after that. What do you do in the summer? You, you go to the beach. You get beat. Yeah, yeah you go to the beach. You do. And we thought, you know, there there's just those last few weeks of winter that are like, can this just be done? I just want to get to spring and summer, you know? You, do. you know what? So we yeah. thought we'd make an episode today about spring and summer. Some spring and summer stuff you could do. So today is all about beach slash sea glass. Now there's a difference between the two, but usually people call it sea glass. Um, so we're just going to call it that for simplicity instead of keep saying beach slash sea glass. Yeah, that's what we had to say. Glass. Yeah, so... Um, we're gonna show you, you know, what is what's it what it is, and some cool colors, and what it means, and uh, just hope you en enjoy this episode. All right. Okay. All right. So. so the first thing is, what exactly is beach glass? Now, as I said, uh, sea glass and beach glass are similar, um, but they slightly come different. Yeah, but just slightly different. Um, they come from two two different types of water. Sea glass is uh, physically and chemically. Uh, weathered glass found on the beaches uh, along bodies of salt water. So that's salt water, which is the sea glass. Um, these uh, weathered process uh, produces natural frosted glass. So, you, you know, when you see like beach glass and it's kind of like white and frosty, mm -hmm. that, that can be like more with the salt water. Right. Um, so beach glass comes from fresh water and in most cases has a pH balance and a less frosted appearance uh, than sea glass. So it's going to be clear than sea glass. Um, right, because it's not from the sea. Exactly. Um, so naturally produced sea glass originates as a piece of glass from broken bottles, anything, anything glass that really breaks and falls in the ocean. Right. Right. Um, it could be anything, and it could even be from shipwrecks. Um, Ooh, if people have even found... that would be fun. Yeah, people... From a shipwreck. I know, that is so cool. Um, so people have even found things like, uh, they found like glass doll heads, glass doll heads, which is like really old. Like, like porcelain dolls. Right, exactly. Yeah. Um, but they've also found, like, glass dice, which they don't really make anymore, so that's pretty old. Um, so they found a lot of cool things in the ocean. Right. That are made out of glass. So yeah, that's what it is. Find. Yeah. So then how does it become sea glass? Good question, because that's what I'm going to answer right now. Exactly. So the sea glass is rolled and tumbled in the ocean for years until all of the edges are rounded off, and the slickness of the glass has been worn, and it gets that frosted look. Yeah. Um, and it can take up to 20 or 40 years, and sometimes as long as 100 years, to acquire its characteristic texture and shape. So right. it just has to be continually moved around in the ocean. Yeah, so if you find a piece that's like, it still has like the, the edge glass, like, like it just broke off or something, it's probably not been in the ocean for very long. Right. But if you find like the nice, um, you know, soft look to it, that's it's probably been in right. the ocean Right, because you're walking on the beach. Sometimes you're going to find just broken glass that's right. just on the beach. Yeah. <laughs> um, so where can we found? I mean, sea glass can really be found almost anywhere. You know, it's just as long as you go to a beach or a lake or, or a body of water. Uh, but some good places to find it are places like Bermuda, Scotland, the Isle of Man, uh, Dominican Republic, Australia, and it, uh, Italy and southern Spain are actually famous for their bounty of sea glass. Right. Now, in the U.S., again, you can really find it anywhere, but these are just a few that you can go to. Um, there's Bar Harbor, Maine. Uh, there's Fort Bragg, California. And there's Lake Erie, Pennsylvania, which is the one we like to go to. Um, and we'll have some pictures up there. We've gone, like, I don't know, three years or so. Right. Um, and then there's Lake Michigan, uh, Michigan. Did not know it was called that. Michigan, Michigan. <laughs> well, Lake Michigan is in Michigan, so yeah. I guess so. Pretty much if there's water, you can look for it. Right. Um, and now here is how to find it when you are looking. Um, so try to look right where the waves are coming onto the beach um, or the place right before the waves hit the sand. So not too far back. We're looking right. at the perfect spot. Um, if you look in the dry sand, it's going to be a lot harder to find. Um, and usually the more you dig in like the wet area, the more you're going to find because right. it's not all on the surface. So it takes a lot of patience, but it's really cool when you find your, the sea glass in the sand. And I mean, I have found like a few pieces in the dry sand, but again, it's going to be very rare if you find it in there. So it's better to yeah. look in wet sand. Um, so the colors, there are so many different colors because glass is made in so many different colors. Um, but there is a common to rare uh, kinds of beach glass. And actually the most common, which I found the most of, is uh, clear, brown, and green. Now there are different kinds of green. Some are rare, some are more common. I've gotten more of the more, more common one. 
um, but clear or white. Um, most clear sea glass comes from items such as soda bottles, uh, glass food containers, liquor bottles, wine bottles, and mason and ball jarring uh, jars, as well as, well as old milk bottles, uh, medicine bottles. Usually, it, uh, clear glass looks more frosty because it's more it's more clear, uh, and when and white when dry, and is often referred to as white sea glass because it, it can be called clear or white. Um, roughly two out of three pieces of sea glass you find will be white, uh, clear or white. Wow! <laughs> wow! Listen to that. Thanks, Thanks plane. an airplane. Great. Okay. okay. Anyway, <laughs> um, so it can also be from like glass cups and and so much more. I mean. White is pretty common to find. Yeah. Um, the next pretty common one is brown that you'll find. Exactly. Um, it comes mainly from beer, root beer, and whiskey bottles. Um, the older the glass, obviously, the less common it is. Right. Because it's old. Mm -hmm. um, also, old Clorox and Lysol products came in brown bottles. Um, and today, many wine and American beer companies still use the brown bottles to help protect the liquor inside the bottles from the sun, if you didn't know that. Yeah, so um, exactly, that's why it's more common, because it's still used today. Right. Yeah. Um, and something in and the white. region of one to two pieces of sea glass will be brown. So, yeah. pretty common. Yeah, so uh, the next one, which is pretty common, I found a lot of this, which is, uh, it's called Kelly Green. And Kelly Green sea glass is uh, one of the most common found today, and it's mainly from lemon-flavored lemon sodas, such as 7-Up, Sprite, Mountain Dew, and wine and beer bottles. And then one in five pieces of sea glass will be green. So that's pretty common. Yeah. Uh, the next one is seafoam green. So there's lots of greens here. Right. Uh, seafoam green was a common color for bottles actually in the late 1800s and early 1900s. That's a little bit older. Yeah. Green or soft aqua is the natural color of glass caused by the iron naturally found in batch sand. A common source of this color of glass may come from old Coca-Cola bottles, which can be found in clear and shades of aqua, seafoam green, and light blue. Um, other sources of seafoam green may be old seltzer mineral water bottles that they used to make, mm -hmm. baking soda, fruit jars, and ink bottles. Um, if you find a thick, soft green or seafoam shard, it's likely to be from the early 1900s. So hmm. good for you. That's pretty old. Um, one in 50 pieces of sea glass will be seafoam green. Yeah, I've never found that color. That's a little more, more rare. Yeah. Um, and so the next green is forest green. Now, forest green, uh, green is most likely from beer and wine bottles. Much of it may be also from our glass. Uh, and one in 50 pieces of sea glass will be forest green. And then uh, the next one, which is kind of like brown, but it's not exactly brown, uh, it's a little bit lighter, which is amber, and it can date back to the late 1800s. Um, old Clorox and Lysol bottles, uh, along with tobacco snuff bottles, medicine bottle or jars, beer beer bottles, and even brown mason jars, have all uh, contributed to the abundance of brown and amber sea glass. So there's a lot you can find a lot of that. That is a little bit more rare, the amber, but it's still pretty common. Um, it's hard to tell the difference between brown Yeah, it's and very, amber. very tough to tell. Yeah. Unless you're an expert between the two. Exactly. Um, so a one in 25 pieces of sea glass may be amber. All right. There you go. The next one is lavender, which I would always be excited to find. Yeah, she loves um, lavender. I do. Lavender and purple. Much of the lavender sea glass comes from older pre-World War I clear vintage canning jars and other glass containing manganese a decolorizer originally used to remove the green or aqua caused by iron naturally found in batch sand um, some manganese dioxide decolorized bottles may date as early as the 1820s wow that's pretty old and as late as the 1930s How so if you that? find lavender it's most likely pretty old yeah yeah that's pretty awesome um, over a period of many years, the glass made with manganese turns lavender when exposed to the sunlight. Hmm. This is called sun purpled. Oh, what a fun word. <laughs> Look sun at that. Purpled. Sun purple. <laughs> I would use that all the time now. Uh, one in 300 pieces of sea glass will have a lavender hue. So that's, that's a lot rarer, definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so the next one is pink, which I found one piece of pink, which I'm pretty excited about. Uh, uh, that's pretty cool because it is rare. Um, it's usually a soft peachy pink, which is kind of the one I have. Uh, much of pink sea glass we find today uh, likely comes from the depression glass. Um, depression glass was produced in the U.S. in the 19, 
uh, hundreds and or the or early 1900s and came in a range of colors. Uh, it was mass produced low and glassware because it was a Great Depression. You know, they had to cut down on on stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and then during the 1930s, depression glass was marketed marketed as affordable glassware and could be porch purchased at five dimes. And it was also used at, by cereal and laundry soap companies, which would often include a piece as a gift with a purchase. Look at that. Look at that. That's a cool one to find. Yeah, and then also gas stations and movie theaters also used depression glass as a gift with a purchase. Uh, one in 1,000 pieces of sea glass may be peach or pink. So, oh, very rare. Very rare. Yeah. <laughs> All right, the next one is aqua. Um, aqua glass has many subtle variations and shades. Um, sources of this glass could be from a vintage canning jar, so lots of canning jars. Right. Lots of canning jars. Or a vintage insulator used on electric poles in the early 1900s. Um, seltzer mineral water bottles, medicine bottles, and also ink bottles could be what this is from. Right. Um, colorless glass replaced aqua as the color of choice. With one exception, the greenish aqua of Coca-Cola bottles. Oh, yeah. So, one in 500 pieces of sea glass may be aqua. Look at that. Um, Okay, so cornflower blue. It predates the color cobalt blue, which is the next one we're going to talk about. Um, It is much lighter in color, and cornflower blue sea glass most likely comes from pre-1900s Philips Milk of Magnesia bottles. Um, Brumo seltzer bottles, Vicks vapor rub, and inkwells. One in 500 pieces of sea glass may be corn flower blue. Yep, and then we move on to cobalt blue. Um, so cobalt blue sea glass is vibrant and jewel-like. Yes. So it's very cool to find this one. The best known sources for cobalt blue sea glass are vintage Noxzema jars, Bromo seltzer, milk of magnesia, Vicks Vapo rub, medicine and poison bottles, castor oil bottles, glass rolling pins, um, collarium soothing eye lotion, glass, um, eye wash cups, ink bottles, and perfume bottles. So lots of choices there, but that's all like older sounding stuff, right? You know, like glass eye wash cups who has that yeah um and so the next one i haven't found any yet uh, is orange sea glass and it i uh, probably originates from auto warning lights um vintage a- avon uh glassware decorative glass items and art glass avon. or avon it also could be from uh old decorative uh household items one in ten thousand pieces of sea glass may be orange so that is pretty rare yeah it's pretty find cool that. to find that yeah all right, and we have red is up next. Red sea glass is one of the most difficult colors of sea glass to find. Um, Anchor Hawking Royal Ruby Red Glassware. That's <laughs> wow. a name for you. Yeah. It was popular and made items such as dishes, cups, glasses, bowls, platters, and vases um, that were produced from 1938 to 1967, and then again briefly in the 1970s. Um, in the 1950s, Schultz Beer asked Anchor Hawking to create a red beer bottle for them, and Schlitz Beer, I think it's, yeah, Schlitz Beer, was bottled in Anchor Hawking Royal Ruby. So, there's that name again. There you go. Um, Anchor Hawking discovered a way to use copper to turn glass a red hue instead of the traditional gold, making the cost of producing this glass much more affordable. Uh, many vintage Avon products were bottled in red glass, such as perfume, dinnerware, and decorative household items. Um, other sources for red include car and boat running lights, railroad and ship lanterns, along with various other types of household and decorative glass. Hmm. One in 5,000 pieces of sea glass may be red. Wow. That's pretty rare. Um, and so the next one is turquoise. Um, turquoise is very rare. Uh, a few of the possible origins for these gorgeous treasures are old electric glass uh, insulators, vintage siphon, seltzer water bottles, old decorative glass, and Victorian era stained glass window panes. Mm. Um, one in 5,000 pieces of sea glass, maybe deep turquoise. So, how about yellow? Yellow sea glass or light amber sea glass? Um, sources for the sea glass are depression glass, art glass, stained glass, old glass insulators, and glass that is made with selenium. Uh, during World War I, the glass industry replaced manganese with selenium, 
Over a period of many years, glass made with manganese turned lavender when exposed to sunlight, hmm. and glass made with selenium, I can't say that word, selenium, <laughs> um, turns a soft yellow gold when exposed to sunlight. Uh, one in 3,500 pieces of sea glass might be yellow. Look at that. Now, I did find, um, you'll see up there, I found a yellow, yellowish piece. It's kind of a very dark yellow, it's hard to see, but I'm pretty sure it is yellow. Um, it could be like a greeny yellow, I'm not sure. Yeah. But that's the closest I've ever gotten to yellow. Um, so the next one is gray. And most gray glass shards came from thick pieces of uh, leaded glass tableware and depression glass. Another source could be old television screens. Um, they used to be gray. Mm -hmm. um, one in 2,000 pieces of sea glass may be gray. All right, and then how about black? During the 1700s, most liquor and ale or beer bottles were mass produced as a cheap container between 1840s, like the 1840s and 1880s. Um, the bottles remain a deep, dark, olive green color. The glass only appears to be black because of the density of the glass. Um, if you find sea glass that is black, it might look like a common rock. Um, it's best to take it home and hold it up to a light to be able to really tell. Right. Um, this glass may be from champagne bottles, case gin bottles. Uh, this tall bottle is easily identifiable due to its square size and narrow at the base. Uh, dark green, or it could also be dark green wine bottles as well. Yeah. Um, one in 2,000 pieces of sea glass might be black. So if you find black, that is really old. Yeah. That is really old. But I guess it is hard to tell because, like, it could just be a dark color. So you have to really make sure that it's Yeah, that's actual... right. Take it home to the light and look it over. Right. Okay, so there are other, like, variations of these colors, but that's pretty much it for that. The last thing I want to talk about is if you're not sure if your glass is old or not, a big indicator that it is old, like... 1940s and back like if you'll know if it's that time period that and back um, that is ultraviolet sea glass or UV glass um, so sometimes it's hard to tell if your sea glass is old but a big indicator is this um, because this was produced with an element of uranium Vaseline or UV glass uh, is easily recognizable as it glows under a black light or an ultraviolet light that's a good way to test it. Right. Get you your black light out. The main production periods for Vaseline and UV glass was during the late 1800s up to World War II. Um, and then it, the use of uranium for the production of glass was prohibited. Because um, it was it was kind of dangerous. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> I'm yeah. stop using that. So, to the naked eye, most Vaseline or UV glass appears to be clear with a soft pale green or yellow tint. So, it's hard to spot... Uh, on the beach unless you have a portable black or ultraviolet light with you. Now I did get like a mini, uh, you can get a mini black light. It's like this big. It's pretty easy to take with you. you yeah, can look it's at handy. It. And that is about it for that. So definitely if you want to find out if it's old, get a, a little black light and mm -hmm. you can know if there's uranium in it or not, which is right. pretty cool. Yeah. Um, so we hope you enjoyed that. Learned something about C slash beach class. Um, go try it for yourself in the spring summer. It's yeah, really fun. Definitely. It's yeah. fun. Um, and um, are we going to show these creations? That you oh, yeah, the yeah. Glass? So yeah. with sea glass, you can also make art with. So I made this um, for this for my mom. It's like a, a flower, and I used, like, this is when we went to Lake Erie. These are actually rocks from there and some sand from there and some little mm -hmm. rocks. And you can take, like, like, look at this old, what is this called again? This bottle? Wasn't there a name for it? I don't know what no. it is called. <laughs> I thought we said the name, but I guess not. But you can layer it, and you can... You know, as long as you can see what's inside. Like, here's the little pink one. Are you going to show this? Class? Yeah, I'll definitely okay. show that. So, again, I hope you enjoyed that. You can go try that for yourself if you're near to a beach or going to a beach or lake. Right. Um, and now it is time for the news. A new company by the name of Sam Who Sings, an offshoot of Samsung by a former employee of that company, has recently launched a new way for people to communicate called Glass in a Bottle. Striving to get back to the old-fashioned roots, this new system works the way pretty much that is described in the name. An agent will take your message, secure it in a glass bottle, and throw it in the closest body of water near to the recipient. Unfortunately, Tests of this product have led experts to announce there is only a 0.07% chance the message will successfully make it to the recipient. And to stay with our theme of water today, 
A man from Florida has undertaken a new project to allow seagulls to compete in the Beachwide Seabird Olympics. He has been running this event for 18 years, and up to this point in time, seagulls were not allowed to participate due to the complaints from pelicans that they cheat in most games. We will follow this story and update you to the committee's decision. And now it is time for the Taylor Okay, what are we going to get today? I will take this one. All right, Slatty's take a lot of company. Oh, two truths and a lie for me. All right, I have a would you rather. Would you rather have no smell or no taste? Hmm. Probably no smell. I would rather be able to taste stuff. But smell is a part of it. Yeah, taste. I was just going to say that. It doesn't make sense because you have to smell to be able to taste. Right. So I feel like if you lose one, you're going to lose the other. Yeah. Unless you, no, you wouldn't lose your smell if you lose taste. Right. Um, but I guess if you're in a different world where you can uh, have no smell and taste, I would go with no smell because I love food. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I have my three and they are, I once got lost in a parking garage. I once got lost in a hotel and I once got lost in a department store. So, one of those is false. I'm going to say the false one is the hotel? No, it's the department store. Oh, really? Yes. you never gotten lost in the department store? I have not. I mean, like, you know, you have, you have trouble finding things, but I mean, like, really lost. Like, the one time I couldn't find my car. Like, you know, you're doing that thing where you're like, where is it? <laughs> I can't How'd you get it? lost in a hotel, though? Well, it was more I was coming off of a parking garage and I accidentally got off the elevator in a hotel where I didn't, I wanted to go to the ground floor to get out, but I went into the hotel and then I'm walking around and they're like asking me, oh, can we take your coat? Because <laughs> I thought I was going to like go to, I don't know, it was like a casino or something and mm -hmm. I didn't mean to be in there and I just got really lost, so. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But I did find my way out, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we hope you enjoyed this episode, learned some stuff about Beach and Sea Class. Mm -hmm. uh, make sure to give us a like and a comment and subscribe. And then after you subscribe, make sure to press the bell so you get all of our videos in your notifications box. And we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching that episode. Thank if you. you'd like to subscribe down here, that would be subscribe. awesome. If you would like to watch a previous episode, right you can up click here. up here. If you'd like to watch a random episode, you can right click down, down here. here. We'll see you next time. Bye! Bye.